like, so I don't want butane. I want to bring Butter King yeah. up here. Let's get him up. Um, and we should talk about this whole concept of butter. Because we, we've been talking mostly about the dry sift and that kind of stuff here. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a whole other well, realm we just, of... We just started talking about dry sift. Yeah. Ellen, but, I mean, really, we're like we were talking about, about dry sift in the end as well. Uh, it's all going to be about the sift, and it's all going to be about concentrates today. Just it th- is all about... It's a candid conversation Are you on coming up to do a rip here? How you doing, man? Thanks for coming on the show here, my friend. Is this, wait, your first time on the show? I can't remember if it is or not. I seem, seem to forget things quite easily. <laughs> first time on the show, so, really? wow, it's an honor to have you on. Yeah, I wasn't sure if maybe you had come and sat on and puffed down with us once or twice or something, but that never, tends to happen never, with no, anybody drifting time. through. <laughs> yeah, first time. So very cool to have you on, my friend. Now, of course, it's all in the name. You're known for this substance called butter. And, I mean, you, you're quite huge in the history of this whole thing. Can you explain to us what this is and how you got involved in it? Give us the Butter King story, essentially. Um, and here I'll get you to talk. Well, I guess uh, ni- in the 90s, I, I, I made, came up with butter in, in the 90s, the mid-90s. And, uh, you know, there was nothing out but Bubble Man was making his bags and doing hash at the end yeah. of the 90s. And uh, there was people smoking pot, but uh, the, the odd batch of honey oil, but there was really nothing else that, you know. So we always uh, wanted to get a little higher. So, um, you know, we enlisted this one gentleman to make uh, with our scraps. You know, being a big grower, I had lots of bags of extra scraps. And I had uh, a friend of mine uh, make it into uh, really good oil. Well, Lord behold, it turned into shatter, you know, uh, glass. We right. called it glass. So uh, we had this glass, and we had it for, a, a, you know, a year or more. And uh, I had a friend that had the, the keen knowledge to uh, take a piece of that glass and put it on uh, the, sh- the uh, windowsill in the sun. It melted. And uh, he grabbed a tool, and he started uh, turning it and turning it. And we all noticed it was going lighter and lighter in the in the sun so we put it back up there and it hardened up and the difference was you know we smoked this glass forever but uh, you know every time you took a, a poke at it it would just flick all over the floor and land everywhere and it was just a bitch to you know, not very pliable right. so you know the invention of a pliable product and lord behold it tasted better too mm-hmm. so uh, you know it didn't and this take was just me. by putting it in the sunlight, essentially. Yes, yeah, and melting it, and then giving it a you know a stir and a stir and a stir and a stir, and and watching the uh, what uh, unfolded in front of us. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we didn't really realize what we were doing, or you know, but uh, it clicked soon after mm-hmm. uh, for me, anyways. Well, and can you explain exactly what is happening there? What what is it that makes that the sunlight change it? Do we know? Well, I think you're introducing uh, you're basically whipping it. You're introducing oxygen, yeah. oxygenation, and uh, oxidation occurs when uh, you leave it out and it reverts back to its origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, introducing oxygen, whipping it, right, definitely. changes the texture and the consistency. Of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm no chemist, but you know, I am a good businessman. <laughs> Smart yeah. man, and so. Yeah. But I know, um, yeah, it took off from there. And we knew that having pliability was better than having a sticky mess. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know, fast forward uh, to uh, the opportunity to bring it out to the world was in 2003 when Don Briere opened the kind on Commercial Drive. That's right. So I, before the doors opened, we were, he, Don was renovating. And I approached him and said, Don, I can make this, you know, really make a difference here. And uh, it really helped the kind take off, and uh, it really helped uh, the explosion, uh, you know, take place. And the people have never had anything like that. And uh, of course, going to 420 and having endless lineups of free butter hoots uh, for many years, dating back. And uh, yeah, then uh, of course Don got busted, and uh, it's, people needed their butter still, so. Uh, it's just been up, up, and away, and now you see every stretch of the earth, people know about butter, and, uh, and more and more people are turning to extracts rather than uh, cannabis, smoking it, but I tell you this, I smoke nothing but butter for years, 
and no cannabis, uh, you know, buds. And uh, I went back because there's no substitution for uh, buds or even uh, hash for that matter. You need it all, eating it. And it's just part of the makeup, you know. You, you, I, part of my uh, medicine cabinet. Right. I definitely. Right now, so this process using um, solvents essentially to remove the uh, active ingredients. Some people say that this leaves a residue there, and they, you know, there's lots of talk about this. What do you? What are your thoughts on that whole side of things? How how much is actually left there? Is there a danger to smoking butter in any way? Well, I, before I came public, uh, Don and Carol insisted that we take it to a laboratory, not just one lab, but two labs, and, uh, and have it tested for purity, potency, and the microbiology. It came back absolutely clean. They did every test and a wide screen of all toxins. There was no alcohol, anything left in it. And I have those test results. And not just that, but we've had several labs since uh, do their independent tests and they still conclusively find that it's clean. So people that say there's residue and all this stuff, uh, I don't know where they're coming from. They need to look and uh, check out my results or at least check their own chemistry and their own knowledge. Are those results, when you say check them out, have you published them somewhere or something? Like I've consistently put them online and I have them at my store and I've showed them to many people. Very cool. And so, just so I, we tell the people where your store is, where is your store? We have two locations, one next to St. Paul's, and we have one uh, on actually uh, 1176 Thurlow, uh, next to St. Paul's, and we have one on Commercial Drive, 2137 Commercial Drive. Fantastic. And people can find that stuff online as well, right? I believe there's, uh, yeah, several outlets online, yes. I mean, your, your website. Definitely, the Butter King quality, yeah. Ask for Butter King. <laughs> so, so many imitators, oh my goodness. It's just got out of control. Well, I was going to say that. So now once this happened and you started, I mean, you said that it kind of platformed because you managed to get it in some dispensaries and things like that. But how did this, I mean, this got picked up not just here in Vancouver, but all over the world. I mean, this has become well, a huge thing now. I met, I met a lot of people from California when I came public. And uh, they ran back as fast as they could. And uh, they've since made several uh, people down there very rich. I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, because you see the butter everywhere. It's, you know, every dispensary I go into, there's butter. And it's known all over the place. I mean, there's articles in High Times Magazine and everywhere else. Yeah, I, I did so. three issues of High Times last year. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, um, I stick to my quality. And people know that, and they know that they can trust the Butter King quality. Well, that's very cool, my friend. So now, you said that in your cabinet you have other things. Are there other types of extracts that you... Have you expanded on the butter concept outside of that and done any other kind of alchemical well, magic with your, your products? You, you can imagine um, having access to the uh, powerful concentrate before anyone else. Uh, we definitely had people uh, experimenting with different medications. Um, you know, we've uh, basically pioneered several uh, instant remedies and uh, using butter in the cleanest form of butter drops, cobra oil, we call it. Uh, we have mists, we have gels. We created the gel. Every since then, you see everyone and their dog has a gel. Mm -mm. Yep. But I want to say that uh, we were sitting around one day and we had uh, an idea that we wanted to uh, trademark the name. So we originally called it Butter with T's. But having gone to the copyright office, they said, there's no way you can do this. So my brother came back right away and he said, we have to change this up. And uh, he recommended we do Butter with two D's. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. He didn't like it. No. So I, uh, <laughs> but it since stuck and took off. And, well, because uh, it's the play on Bud. Yeah, it, it, it's far better than me. I'm just the caretaker. <laughs> but you can see, I, you know, all I ever wanted to do was to introduce people to it and everyone make their own. But uh, a funny story, I have a brother-in-law, and he's seen the success I got. So he figured, because I wouldn't show him how to make it, that he'd come up with his own brand, and he started using butane. So he invented the butter made with butane, and... And it took off because it's much easier to make than right. butter, obviously. And uh, a lot of people make it with 
butane. And a lot of people say there's no harm in butane. But I can tell you that in, I, when I came public with butter, I had a gentleman that holds the patent in Switzerland for oil extraction, one of the only countries that do hold patents for such things. He said, Steve, if you're making it with butane, I can tell you right now that you're going to get lesions on your brain. And funny thing, it happened to my brother-in-law who introduced butane to the world. He Whoa. got br lesions on his brain. Wow. And uh, we thought it was cancer at first, and it turned out it wasn't. But several people since have been making it with butane because it's easier. I mean, you can take stuff you sweep off the floor, you run it through a honeybee extractor, and bing, you got some goo. You know, I don't agree with that. And I, I don't know anyone who makes uh, butter with alcohol like I do. I mean, but I know everyone and their dog makes it with butane. And they seem to think it's butter, but it's not. Right, no, yeah. You know, I invented really butter. Popular. I invented the word. I know what butter is. And people who make butane jelly hash, that is not butter. But thank you, you've made me famous. <laughs> wow, well. Now, it, it, you said that you've helped other people make this stuff. Is there a recipe that you've published online where that people can go for the definitive way to make this, or is that a trade secret? Uh... I published it basically in High Times. I showed High Times how to make it. Yeah. I have a problem with my method. It's flammable, it's viable, and it's dangerous. Yeah. And any fool that wants to make it, and there seems to be a lot that do, will get, uh, catch themselves in flames and possibly die. And that's one thing I don't want. Right. So and, I haven't many, and a few people have. I mean, we see stories. People well, blowing their living rooms up. And yeah, and uh, those it. are all butane disasters. You know, uh, very few. I've made thousands of batches of butter with alcohol and not a single issue. And, uh, you know, I know people that will come in and they'll make butter and they won't have any ventilation on or anything and their element will be on red hot and they'll wonder why they have a fire. Yeah. He's taking a photo. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, well, and I know, you know, we've published articles in Cannabis Culture about this before and whenever we talk about extracting and th the dangers you know we can refer to these things there are people like literally cookie in the building here blew himself up he's lucky to be alive after launching himself out of his living room or whatever so wow. yeah it's uh there's a serious danger when you're using certain types of solvents you know because they are very flammable um, oh, definitely. And, now, and alcohol is also of course flammable in some ways but you yeah. haven't had any problems well thank god it isn't like gasoline that uh, it's combustible that way but it is flammable and uh yeah, you know, it, in the hands of the majority of people, I think it's, yeah, it's an issue. That's uh, why I don't really show a lot of people, but maybe the one day uh, there will be the proper time uh, I will do that. But it's no secret. I mean, it's basically, it's out there. There's enough people showing videos uh, that are doing it properly. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, making oil, really fine, clean oil, the best po possible, and then taking it and uh, whipping it up. Baking it, yeah, you know, and uh, doing your science. It's definitely not for someone who uh, isn't methodical. Right. Yeah, well, and uh, it's a very cool thing because it kind of has launched this whole... I mean, there, it seems to be that there's been a combination of things that did it. You know, Bubble Man, who's in the building now, had a big effect. Hey, on the all right, hash. Mark. Another hash legend. But yeah, I mean, we've seen really this explosion and it's... I mean, it's all over the damn planet now. It's huge. Yeah, oh, they dabs and, uh, you know, butter is the future. Um, what can I say? Uh, you know, um, it's, uh, it's everywhere. It's taking off, and uh, it speaks for itself. I mean, people want uh, what they want, and they want the best. Yeah, yeah, and they, exactly. It's a stronger, cleaner product and it makes perfect sense so man that's very cool i really appreciate you coming on and telling us the story and stuff I, 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 thanks for having me